the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Good to see you. Heavenly Father, we just worship you, Jesus. and adore yes. you. And we Blessed praise you. Name. We thank Hallelujah. you for the privilege of prayer. And we pray for our oh, whole community, glory, Lord. Lord. Yes. We pray for all the churches, but especially today for High Plains. And yes. we ask you that they would have pure doctrine, that you would bless the people, that they bless would love you, Lord. Yes with all protect their heart, them, and you'll protect, protect them. And yes. we pray for the Hyman family, yes, Jesus. that uh, you will help them to come more often, and that you would bless them. And I just thank you for them. And then for 4J School, uh, Lord, we pray for the schools that you'd protect thank every student, safety. that you would rid it from protection. anything that's unclean and ungodly, Jesus. and that you would bless our school system, Lord. Yes. And Lord, just be over this nation. We pray that people will begin to turn back to you and that we would restore the foundations, the Christian foundation we have in this nation. And uh, bring that revival that's been prophesied, yes. And our eyes are on you, Lord. No man can do it, only you can. And I thank you for hearing these prayers. And we pray for Espy and for Brenda's husband. And we pray for Rachel, Larry, and for Lee for total healing. And Lord, we humbly ask you to provide us a building of her own. Yes, and Lord. lead and guide us as we go out this All week. Jesus, and we just love you, Lord, in Jesus, Jesus' name. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's a couple of scriptures I want to look at this morning. And we're going to have some time after the message today, so it'll be a short message. And we're going to pray for and bless each person here. How's that? Amen. We're going to bless each person here. We do this in the beginning of the year because it's always good. Amen. I think we just sang a song. There's no other rock like our God. And that means he's a rock. That means we build everything on him. Everything in our life. Right. Amen. Thank you, Louise. I'm going to have me an amen corner. Over here. Thank you, Louise. Praise God. Amen. Church. That's right. He didn't build the church on Peter. He built it on, the, on Peter's testimony, which was, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And I'm glad you brought that up, because that's important to know. And, then, and he said to Peter, You're Peter, and on this rock, with his testimony, I will build my church. Amen? So his church stands on a rock today. Praise God. The Lord actually gave me this word as I was coming home last night. All right, let's go to Psalm 30. Amen? We're having fun up here. It's good. Hallelujah. I, I want you to know, uh, and I'm, I'm reading this uh, from King David. King David wrote Psalm 30. And I'm reading this because it was in response to David's heart. And David's heart was pure before the Lord. And I believe one of the reasons why David's heart was pure before the Lord was because he believed that God answered prayer. If you go back to Psalm number 5, you will find out that David prayed for something, but then he didn't stop there at prayer. He waited until God did it. He like stood there and just expected God to do it and to do it right away. Amen? So David had some awesome faith that I think we can, we can appropriate to ourselves, especially Amen. in the coming year. Amen? So we're positioned at the beginning of a, of a new year, amen, I wasn't here last week, the first Sunday of the new year, so I'm going to kind of make up for lost time today a little bit, anyway, and, and speak to you the fact that God does answer prayer, amen? amen? Now there's some prayers that he didn't answer the way we asked him to ask, you know, and, and some of us can say, thank you Lord that you didn't answer them the way I asked you to do them, because... Uh, sometimes he really does know better than what we ask for. Amen? And sometimes he gives us something uh, maybe a little different than what we ask for. And that's okay. Because he's in control. He's the Lord. Amen? That's what Lord, Amen. the word Lord means. A lot of people say Jesus is Lord. Well, Jesus is Lord. That means that he runs the kingdom his way. Okay? Amen? Are you with me? Now, a lot of times, like we sang today, People sing that song, Chainbreaker. And uh, they really, truly believe that God breaks chains. They really do. I believe the entire church, I mean worldwide, believes 
that God breaks chains. I really do. Now, you know there's a but coming after this, right? So, I, first of all, I want you to know that I believe that God, God's people believe that God will break the chains. In other words, where you're in bondage, where you're bound, where, where you can't break free from. You know, there might be a habit that you can't break free of or whatever. Well, I want you to realize that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and you asked Jesus Christ into your life, the chains were broken. Amen. Right Amen. then and there. Oh, yeah. So what's the but about? Well, the but is about we, we see the chains broken and we pick them up and we throw them around our necks and we still wear them. Even though they're broken. Are you with me? So there are a lot of people singing, if you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Because, yes, he breaks chains. The problem is, we think they're little things to wear. We think they're our friends. We think they're our buddies. We think they're, you know, they're, they're, they're bling. You know, you all know, know what bling is? Like what Chris got around his neck, he got some bling on. Amen. Um, they're not bling. They're yuck. Amen? Amen. Y'all understand what yuck is? Yeah. Praise God. So, uh, I, I want as we read today, I want you to understand that not only are the chains going to be broken, but the chains are going to come off this year. Amen? Amen. Hear it. Amen. And then Amen. hear it in the Spirit. The chains are coming off this year. Amen. Amen. All the chains. Oh. Amen? Even the, even the pretty chains. You know, it's easy maybe to throw off the iron chains. The rusty chains, the ones that spent like 20 years on somebody's ship and then they're wrapped around your neck and they're all rusty and pitted and ugly, amen? But not only are those going to come off, but the friendly gold chains are going to come off, amen? I'm not telling you to stop wearing gold jewelry, amen? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the pretty ones that the devil has given to you are going to go. Oh, like what? I'm getting a like what from them. Like what from them. Well, some people think, and we're going to read a scripture in just a minute, okay? Some people think that, um, uh, you know, being angry and, and it is a good thing. It served me well all my life. And that's what I'm trying to illustrate is that anything, you know, it could really be ugly, but to you, to, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So you might think it's a beautiful gold chain, and it's not. It's ugly, and everybody else in the world thinks it's ugly, but you think it's nice because it seems to serve you well. People, certain people get angry. You know, certain people get angry, and they get their own way. You know, uh, if especially if they're around a lot of passive people, right? So they get their own way because everybody just doesn't want to even put up with it. They just say, "I'll just do what they want to do," and then they'll leave me alone. All right. So that's a gold chain. A gold chain is whatever you think is, is pretty, but to other people it really doesn't look attractive. Amen? Have you ever been told by somebody that what you thought was all that in a bag of potato chips uh, wasn't very pretty at all? Anybody ever been told that besides mm -hmm. me? Please make me feel better. Raise some hands. Okay, thank you very much. All right. So that, that's, that's a gold chain. Yeah, well, that's, but that's the attitude. That's the attitude we should have, is they're all ugly. It could Amen. be like pride. Or could be pride. Even insecurity. Yep. Insecurity, being greedy. Wanting to hang around uh, wrong friends. Exactly, wrong friends. You know. Not spending your money properly. Could be a million things. Amen. I'm detailed. I got to Okay, process. all right. Good. Here, come on up and join me. You're right here. I'll even give you a microphone. She's a detailed person. Okay. So, praise the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 30. And uh, I was going to, I want to start reading at the beginning. I want to read down to verse number 5 this morning. I'm changing things all around. Isn't that nice? Amen. So this is David. Uh, it says in my Bible, anyway, it says that Psalm 30 was for the dedication of the temple, which is a great, this is a great psalm for the dedication of the temple. But David believed in answered prayer. All right, verse 1. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths. Amen. And did not let my enemies gloat over me. So not only did he get delivered, right? All of a sudden, all the chains were gone, and not only were they broken, but they fell off. Amen. But also, 
God provided for the tongues of people that wagged against him to stop the people that gloated over him, which is a good thing. All right, so you'll see this whole psalm is is kind of fashioned around David being in trouble, and then David being delivered and rejoicing of the miracles of God. Amen. That wow, even the enemies don't gloat over me anymore. You think that you know somebody would say something derogatory? No. He was totally delivered. Verse 2. O Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you what? You healed me. Hallelujah. Amen. If, if anybody is sick in this room today, you need help. And the Lord has the help you need. Amen. The Lord has the help you need. I know. That's, that could be a gold chain. One of those gold chains could be, you know, you, we're so dependent on the, on the medical profession. And I'm not downplaying the medical profession, because I go to the doctor too. But I want to tell you something. Amen. That could be a gold chain around your neck. We need to have faith in God to heal us. Amen. 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 It's not the doctor. I thank God for them. They help it along. But let me tell you something. It's God that heals everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good preaching, Ed. Thank you. All right. Number three, verse three. Oh, Lord, you brought me up from the grave. That's a good place to be brought up from. Amen. You spared me from going down into the pit. That's the pit of hell. Amen? Yep. Amen. Now here we get into the good part. Sing to the Lord, you His saints. Praise His holy name. For His anger lasts only for a moment, but His favor lasts a lifetime. Amen? So if you've ever been under the, under the strong hand of God, you have to realize that's not forever. I said it's not forever. Amen. 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 Because it says his favor lasts a lifetime. All right. So the so the hard part is for a moment. The favor, the blessing of God in the coming year is that it lasts a lifetime. Glory to His name. And this is the verse that got me, especially this past week, because I did a lot of weeping and I did a lot of crying. Amen. When somebody uh, that's very big in your life. Uh, passes away, it, you, you, you shed tears. Some of the hardest people I knew in that room, in that, in that funeral hall, were crying. Amen? And, and a lot of it was just because of some of the things that God worked out and God did. Amen? I walked in there, I didn't know what He was going to do. I had a couple of verses to give them and a couple of things written out and that was it. And it seemed like when I walked in that room, the Holy Spirit just took over. And he did some things to break down the resistance in people's heart. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And my Amen. God is faithful to do that. Amen? Amen? He is faithful to do that. And so it says here, weeping may remain for a night. Notice, for a night. Say that. For a night. For a night. Amen. It's only for a night. But joy, what does it say? But rejoicing, joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Rejoicing comes in the morning. Amen? I want you to understand. Hallelujah. Yes, weeping touches us. Yes, it does. It touches our life. But for the biggest part, what overshadows our life is the joy in the Lord. And I want to tell you something. If you don't have joy today, you don't have joy in Jesus. Amen? He wants to bring you joy. He didn't save you to torture you. He didn't save you to leave you in misery. Amen? That's a chain you wear. Hear it. That's a chain you and I wear. It needs to come off in the coming year. Amen? Because for the most part in our life, He wants to bring rejoicing. Hallelujah. Oh, it feels good to say that. Praise God. I did a lot of crying last week. A lot. Hallelujah. But the Lord told me on the way home, He says, All right, that was your night. That was your night. Now it's time for joy and rejoicing. Now it's time to thank me for the years your father had on earth. Now's the time to thank me for your church. Whether you see every seat filled or not, now's the time to thank me. Amen? If you see a $10 offering, it's time to thank me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just want to... Like Joyce Meyer says. We just want to... No, we don't. It's when it's, it's the when morning. 
when you see that small offering and you thank God, that's when he makes that small offering expound and abound to where it'll, 10 bucks will pay all the bills. Yeah. Amen. And you know what, Lois? We've seen He's it done. done. And you know what, Lois? He did. He did. He, does he did it. Yeah, he did. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. So, you know, I want you to understand, you're in the morning now. You're in the morning season. Not morning like, oh, but morning like, ha, ha. Yeah, come on. Morning. Hallelujah. That kind of morning you're in. Glory to God. I want you to turn to Ephesians 4. Verse 26 and 27. Talk about being pulled two ways. Here's a scripture that you can be pulled two ways with, okay? And uh, so let me uh, click, kind of clear this up a little bit. It says, be angry. Now, Pastor, you just finished saying, get that chain off. Yeah, okay. Now what? But this fits in with what we're talking about, okay? Be angry and do not sin. Be angry and do not sin. Is there a possibility, church, to be angry and not sin? Yes. Yeah, it says it right there. It says it right there. Be angry and do not sin. So, what do you do? Righteous anger. Uh, yeah. He'll explain. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Front row, I'm getting there. Okay, here we go. All right, be angry and do not sin. Now, here's how you do that. Here it is. Dot, dot, right? Dot, dot. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Amen? So if you're going to be angry, let it stop at sundown. You get, praise God, you get till sundown. Amen? And I would, and I would hope that you would not get angry to the place where the uh, cop car pulls up in front of your house with the lights on and, and takes you away. Because then this doesn't even apply. All right. Yes, sir. There was a famous actress. I don't remember who, what her name was, but she was quoted in the 50s as saying about marriage, do not go to bed angry. Stay up and fight. Stay, stay up and fight. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think that's what he's saying here. But, you know, that's, that was a good one. Yeah. But is he saying you have all day to be No, he's not really saying. He's saying it, it, it's a reaction that you, you and I have, okay? It's a, it's a reaction. And it actually could be good. If you're standing out on the street somewhere and somebody wants to attack your wife or whatever, you should be a little bit angry to the point where you're going to protect your wife, right? So that kind of anger is good. But the problem is, all right, now that uh, this man maybe has come up against your wife or whatever and you've taken care of business, after that happens, that's sundown. That's Sunday. In other words, there's a place where you have to cut it off. It could, you know, the Lord gets angry. Amen? A very good example, Pastor, is when Jesus came to the temple. Yeah. And then when the tax collector yeah. came to the temple, he did exactly the same thing you said right now. Yeah. He got angry, but he didn't sin. Yeah. And I guarantee you, after he did that, it was over. It was over. Amen? So it's time, amen, to tell ourselves, get over it. Get over it. Hallelujah. Because, you see, that, that's the morning season. When you can, you know, when you can take care of business, but yet, afterwards, not have some root of bitterness grow up in your heart. Amen? Amen? And that's the bottom line of all of it, is that we have so many people with that chain on, that chain of bitterness, and it's going to come off this year. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen? Those are not empty words. I believe it because of the word that he's given to me. Amen? So don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Verse 27 tells you, if you let the sun go down on your wrath, verse 27 says, you're giving place to the devil. Right? Amen? So that's not something, that's not a chain you wear that's going to make you look good. That's not a friendly chain. That's not a gold chain. That's not a silver chain. To everyone else, it's a rusty old chain. To Jesus, it's a chain that is holding you back. That you have now chosen. See, it was one thing when you wore it and you were in bondage to that. But when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
and you know the work that he's done. You know he's broken that chain. There's not a thing going on in your life that has got you locked up. If you're locked up, it's because you choose to wear that thing. And I choose to wear that thing. And the Lord wants us free. And he's making a way to do that. And a lot of it is going to be that I, and I hear a lot of people saying that God's going to do this in the coming year. And I believe it. Is that he's going to give you revelation. You're going to understand the word of God better than you ever have in your entire life. Amen. And it's not because you've gotten, a, you, you've gotten a, a, a charge in your mind or something like that. It's because it's the season. It's the time. And God, I, I've been preaching about mysteries for about a month. God, those mysteries are not going to stay mysteries. God's going to give you revelation. Amen. And he's going to give you a lot of peace in the coming year. Praise God. And we are going to see, we're going to see a mighty revival coming up very quickly. We're going to see darkness, darkness being destroyed like we never have before. And we're going to see light flow like we never have before either. Yes, you. Yes. The word that the Lord laid on my uh, heart that I spoke to you about, um, the year of 2019 being preparation and 2020, um, that uh, revival, I spoke with Ivan about it, and he said he's heard the same thing several times over. Yeah, amen. It's coming. Revival is coming. Amen. We, we need to get ready for it. Praise God. And we need revival. I need revival. Everyone in this room, we all need revival. Amen. And God's going God's to gonna bring it. But when it comes, amen, we're going to pre, like Chris says, we're going to be prepared for it because of the revelation that God's going to be given to us throughout the coming year. Amen? We're, we're going to pray, but I want us to stand uh, before we do that. Let's uh, prepare our hearts. Let's ask the Lord to put us in that mourning season, like I've been talking about. Weeping indoors for a night. Now it's time for the joy to come. It's morning. Amen? Amen? We're not going to let the sun go down on our anger. We're not going to let the sun go down on our sin. We're going to get it right with God, amen, and not give place to the devil. We're declaring a morning season over our life, amen. Let's just do that, amen. And the way to declare something is to declare it. Not just say, yeah, yeah, but is to declare it, amen. amen. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer, praise God. And you declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Heavenly Father. Father. we come to you. We thank you, we thank you for, what we've been through. for what we've been through. There's been some trouble. There's been, There's been, some, trouble. Trouble. There's been some difficulty. There's been There's been difficulty. We've tried to deal with it. Sometimes in our own way. Sometimes in our own way. This year, this year it's, not it's not happening. It's not happening. Not happening. Not happening. I am in a morning season. I'm in a morning season. Weeping indoors for the night. Weeping indoors for the night. But joy comes in the morning. But joy comes in the morning. Wake up morning. Wake up morning. Over my life. Over my life. Become the new thing. Become the new thing. Become a person of joy. Become a person of joy. That's what I will be. That's what I'll be. I declare it. I declare it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. That anger. That anger. Will not exist. Will not exist. When the sun goes down. 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 It's over. It's over. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. That's the joy. That's of the joy. coming year. Of the coming and year. And I proclaim that over my life. I proclaim that over my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And that I will walk in it. That I will walk in it. In faith. In faith. And you are answering my prayers. And you are answering my prayers. Just like you did for David. Just like you did for David. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen.